guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome. My name is Hannah and I'm the mom with muscle. And in today's video, we are talking about all of the rule of thumbs when it comes to decorating your home. So if this is something you're interested in watching, just keep on watching. But if you haven't yet already, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You know to hit that bell button for every time I upload a video. And if you're not already following me on Instagram, I would love to have you over at mom with muscle. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So I'm rocking a different hairstyle for you guys. I've been getting super into doing braids, especially on Ryder, so I did a really fun different hairstyle today. But anyways, this video is going to be solely on rule of thumbs, like how high should I hang my curtains? How big of a chandelier do I need for a certain space? All of those kind of tips and tricks when it comes to decorating your home is going to be within this video. I have composed a pretty short list of different things for you guys. So this is going to be kind of a one-stop shop video for those of you who are needing that guidance when it comes to doing these particular house projects. So without further ado, let's get into this video. So rule number one is how high do you hang artwork or a gallery wall above either a bed frame or a couch? Now the rule of thumb for this is around eight to 12 inches. You don't want there to be such a big gap that the artwork is floating so high above the couch that there's going to be some sort of disconnect. You want there to be the connection between not only the couch or the bed and the artwork itself. Do take this video with a grain of salt. If you do go above 12 inches, if you go below eight inches, that is okay. This is just a guideline. This is just kind of a rule of thumb that you are supposed to kind of stick within. If you go above, if you go under, that is okay. I just wanted to create this video to give you guys a little bit of insight if this is an area that you are struggling with or you have no idea what to do, how high to hang things. So again, when it comes to hanging artwork above your couch, you want it to be anywhere from eight to 12 inches. The next item is pillows. If you haven't caught my pillow video, I not only did a haul, but I also did kind of some tips and tricks when it comes to styling your couch. Now, typically I will do three pillows per corner of a couch. Take in consideration, if you have a love seat, if you have a smaller love seat, three pillows on every corner is going to be a little bit too much. So definitely take this video with a grain of salt. I usually stick to around three pillows per corner. If you do have a love seat, you could do one and one, two and one, you can get really creative. But again, when it comes to styling your couch, typically I will do three pillows of different sizes per corner. Curtains, we love curtains, we love them. This is an area that a lot of people struggle with, not only how high to hang your curtains, but how far past a window do you hang the curtain rod? Now, like I've said many times on my channel, when it comes to hanging your curtains, you wanna hang those curtains as high to the ceiling as you can. You want this to give the illusion of your ceilings being extremely high. Now, if you have that rod super close to the window, it's going to make your ceilings appear very short. It's gonna create a very dark space. So again, when it comes to the height, you're gonna to wanna to bring that rod as far to the ceiling as you can, giving this a very floor to ceiling look. I've also talked about doing track curtains as an alternative for giving a super grand look. So instead of doing a rod, you would actually do a track system on the ceiling, allowing for a few inches between the wall and the window itself. So that way the curtain panel had enough uh, room to go in and out. Now, when it comes to how far past the window, you want there to be a four to six inch gap on the sides of the window. So you wanna surpass the window by four to six inches on either side. So do take this in consideration when you are purchasing your rod. For example, if you have a hundred inch window, you don't wanna get a hundred inch rod. You want it to get a 112, 115 inch rod. So that way that rod can go past the window. This is just going to, again, frame out your window to make it appear a lot larger, a lot more luxe. And so that is the next tip is your the next topic is chandeliers. I think this is an area that a lot of people struggle with and there's not a lot of information on how big of a chandelier or a pendant light do you do for a particular space. And this one's actually pretty easy. It does require just a hair bit of math, but let's take my living room for example. I have a 10 foot by 12 foot living room space. All you're going to do is take 10, 12 and add 10 inches to that of a total of a 32 inch diameter chandelier. Again, take this with a grain of salt. If you're a little bit under or a little bit over, that is okay. You just wanna stick within that parameter of around 30 so inches, whether that's 30 to 35 inches for a chandelier diameter. So hopefully this will kind of clear up any chandelier issues. If you are contemplating on how big of a size do you put for a particular room, again, just take the dimensions of your room and just add 10 inches and there you have it. Perfect size chandeliers for your space. Is styling in odd numbers. I know we have all heard of this as styling in odd numbers. It creates more of a visually interesting style of vignette. 
take the sideboard behind me. I have one item and then I have three paired to the right of me or your left. Now, the reason why we style in odd numbers is because when you style in even numbers, it creates symmetry. Whereas if you, if you style in odd numbers, it creates interest. When you style in odd numbers, it's going to definitely capture your attention more than if you were going to be styling in even numbers. If it's an even number, it might fall a little bit flat. It's so weird, but it's just how our eyes and how our brain works is that we gravitate towards odd numbers. It creates a beautiful, visually interesting space. And so again, always style with odd numbers, three being the lowest, obviously odd number that you can style with. Again, the next little tip and trick is always styling an odd number group. The next tip and trick is your mirrors for an entry table or an entryway. I see this all the time where I see mirrors that are way too small for a space. There is no connection between the console table and the mirror above. I, I cringe when I see, you know, a really undersized small mirror above a console table that's floating so far above that there is so much disconnect and it creates just this really unappealing look. So when it comes to hanging a mirror above a entryway, my rule of thumb is go bigger. It is better to be oversized than undersized. It's the same concept of showing up to a party being overdressed than underdressed. So if you are hesitating with what size mirror to do for your entry space, always think bigger is better. You want there to be more of a grand look. If it's too small, it's just going to look very undersized and not good at all. So again, my rule of thumb when it comes to hanging a mirror, make sure that you go a little bit larger than undersized to create a really luxe and beautiful entryway style. Rugs. I think this is another area that a lot of people struggle in. How big of a rug do I do for a particular space, for my living room, for my bed? There are obviously so many guides when it comes to Googling what size rug do you do for a certain space. But again, I always strive for going a little bit larger than undersized. Now, if you are in a living room, I talked about this before, but you want to make sure your rug is at least touching the front legs of all of your furniture. That way there is a connection. Even if you have an accent chair in a corner, you want that accent chair to have its front legs at least on the corner of the rug that way everything is connected if you have that chair off all the way by itself there's going to be again that disconnect so making sure that you have the right size rug for your space making sure everything is connected and that goes hand in hand with your rugs for your bedroom if you have a bed i always suggest either having i personally i feel like the rug looks better when it's halfway between your bed and outwards that way you get a little bit more of the design of the rug instead of it going all the way underneath your bed and coming up to your nightstands that's just my particular preference that's one way to do it where you have your rug come all the way up to your nightstands and allows for more length on the end of it but that would require a bigger rug especially if you have a queen to king size mattress but i always like doing kind of halfway in between the bed and allowing it to have a little bit more length towards the tip. That way you're seeing a little bit more of the rug and that way not all of it's being covered by your actual bed frame. I'm going to probably pop up a couple of just guidelines when it comes to rug size and your space, but this is an area that I think a lot of people struggle with and I think a lot of people also go very undersized. I don't know if they do that because obviously the bigger the rug, the more expensive they cost. There are plenty of very affordable rugs from Rug USA to Home Depot to boutique rugs. There are so many affordable options, even Home Goods, TJ Maxx have really great rugs to be on the hunt for. But obviously, if you get into that more hand woven, more luxe type rugs, those can be upwards of like $10,000. But again, I'm going to pop up some pictures of some different rug diagrams. But again, think go bigger than undersized for a more kind of covered, connected space. All right, you guys, and that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of rule of thumb video. Hopefully this is a one-stop shop if you are needing some guidance on if you're hanging curtains, if you're hanging a piece of artwork, just click on this video and hopefully all of the information needed will be here. But until next time, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here and we'll see you then. Peace.